time they say flies when you're having fun and as we get older. And the reality of walking into the Holiday Inn Express on Monday morning prior to the running of the Investec Oaks and the Investec Derby was all too real because for the past decade we've been walking in there and the staff have become friends and almost like part of the family. But as far as the Investec Derby 2019 was concerned, the one man that played an enormous role in giving us insight into the trials and tribulations of this great race was Simon Holt. He in fact called the Oaks and he called the Derby this year, uh, has visited South Africa on many occasions and we would like to say thank you very much indeed to Simon Holt for giving us such remarkable information as to the outcome of these two great races. And this is not just a pure review of the Investec Oaks and the Investec Derby, but we are going to show you the closing 600 metres of the Oaks, which was won in scintillating fashion by Frankie de Tori for John Gosden. This is a daughter of Frankel, and E.B. Shaw was very bullish about her chances. It looked to all intents and purposes that Ryan Moore and the Aidan O'Brien machine had the race won halfway down the straight, but Frankie de Tori had other ideas. Max had with a chance and here's Pink Dogwood now charging down the centre of the course in the hands of Roy Moore and Pink Dogwood takes it up from Max Ad and Anna Perna. Pink Dogwood out in front by length to Anna Perna. Anna Perna is fighting back on the inside, inside the final furlong. Pink Dogwood is joined by Anna Perna who's running on very gamely for Frankie Dottori and Anna Perna is beginning to get there. Anna Perna has won the Oaks from Pink Dogwood. Dogwood fleeting, rushing home in third. Manuela de Vega in fourth. Annapurna has won the Investec Oaks. It's a fifth success for Frankie de Tori and John Gosden has registered a third success with this filly at eight to one and she had to be good and she had to bra be brave. She had to run down Pink Dogwood who is second for Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien going down fighting and Aidan has also trained the third place horse fleeting Wade Lorden and Aidan O'Brien. That horse coming up from right out the back to come through for third but Anna Perna who had a lovely position tracking on the inside rail has come to challenge Pink Dogwood who at one point looked all over the winner. Well, wasn't that a magnificent ride by Frankie de Tori? And now we're going to go to the telephone. We're going to go with the view that we managed to get of Frankie dismounting, which of course is always nice just to show your own footage because we've all seen the one and only Frankie de Tori dismount, mainly as a result of the expertise of his mother who worked in the circus as a trapeze artist. After which we'll have a brief chat to Frankie de Tori Many of you may have seen this interview, but certainly worth reliving the memories of the 2019 Investec Oaks with Frankie de Tori. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, unexpected, you know, I thought it was a bit of an outsider, but uh, I had all the breaks at a good spot, had a good run on the inside, and, uh, and in fairness, she was very, very brave for me, and uh, she stuck her head out. How did it work, actually, because I know there was an element of loyalty as far as Rab Havlin was concerned, but did that leave you to pick up the pieces or did you make the choice? Well, I'll be honest with you, if I had to choose, I would have probably chose the other one on visual facts because yeah. uh, uh, a trial at Chester was very impressive, uh, but I never rode the filly this year, so I knew my uh, filly would stay, so we kept it simple, I spoke to John and the owners, we thought, the best way of going about it, I'll ride the same filly, Rob ride the same filly, and luckily for me, it worked out. Now, when you won your seven races at Ascot, you told me, and you told the BBC, and you told the world, you came home, and in an hour, you were depressed. I'm sure you weren't depressed this morning. Ah, it was great. I was, obviously, I was in favourite yesterday. I was very laid back, and I was able to enjoy it more. You know, sometimes when you ride a favourite, you're on your nerves, and you're tense, and... Uh, it's more of a relief than an enjoyment, but yesterday it was all enjoyment and uh, came home and wife and all my kids were happy for me and it's great, it was, I had a great night. Well with Oaks Day done and dusted, it was the day for the Investec Derby. The walk into Epsom to get the top hat and tails and of course the puzzle of working out whether the Aidan O'Brien machine were going to scoop yet another victory, their seventh in the Investec Derby or whether a horse like Telecaster who we were kind of a little bit speculative about his chances because it was only 16 days since his best performance in his life in the Dante Stakes. We spoke to O'Sheen Murphy, everything had gone well but clearly a bridge too far 
and it would be very unwise to rule out the chances of Telecaster in forthcoming races because the horse that finished quite some way behind him in the Dante Stakes was a horse called Japan, bred by Dr. Andreas Jacobs at his Newsels Park stud. He's the son of Galileo and he finished like an absolute train and I have no doubt that there are at least a few grade one victories in the pipeline for the son of Galileo. Usually around here the best horse comes to the fore but you know, there's always a case of a horse that mightn't handle the track and, and might be better later on in the year but um, you know time will tell all that. I'm sure there's a plan A, B and C in terms of pace but with seven runners in the race um, you guys are going to want an honest pace and of course that's probably part of your strategy. Yeah look um, Sovereign it's his, um, his natural run style to, to go forward so um, I'm sure he'll do that. Um, you know, as, as long as it's, it's an even pace and everyone has their chance, then we'll be happy. So you couldn't trust Patrick Beggy to sit at the back and come and run you all out of it with wings of eagles again? Obviously not his style of running. Uh, look, if he does, he does. <laughs> and, um, if I don't win, I'd be more than happy for him to do that. So you're confident of a big performance from this beautiful horse that performed so well in his penultimate and his last start? Yeah, um, his, you know, he should improve for the step up to a mile and a half. Um, I don't think the track is going to exactly um, play to his strengths and I'd like a little bit more juice in the ground. But look, you can't have everything your own way. Um, the horse is in great form at home and you know, I'm hopeful for a big run. And they're off. Racing away from the mile and a half start, Broom and Humanitarian were a little bit slow to go. Telecaster is out boldly. So to Anthony Van Dyck and Circus Maximus ridden forward with Norway in the white cap towards the outside. They're chased by Line of Duty and then Mad Moon midfield with Japan and Bangkok and Sir Dragon A on the outside, Hiroshima. Uh, Broom is second last and Humanitarian is the early back marker as they race right-handed through a few shadows and it's now Sovereign that bounds on. So the pace looking earnest here it's looking strong and it's set by Sovereign one of the Aidan O'Brien seven runners leading the Bally Doyle team here Sovereign by a couple of lengths to Norway second Circus Maximus in third Telecaster is handy in fourth then a break of about four lengths back to line of duty in the dark blue jacket Ryan Moore on Sir Dragonet as they begin to run down the hill now Bangkok further back and then on the inside Anthony Van Dyke followed by Japan and then Mad Boon is further back in the field they remain quite well strung out as Broom now makes good progress on the wide outside they're followed by Mad Moon behind those is Anthony Van Dyke line of duty making ground in the all blue jacket Bangkok further back down the home straight Sovereign and Norway coming back to the field Circus Maximus to Dragon A on the outside Mad Moon is right there now inside the final two furlongs Mad Moon and Sir Dragon A chased by Broom in third then Anthony Van Dyke down the outside Japan is running on well Mad Moon and Sir Dragon A fighting it out. Anthony Van Dyke on the far side inside the final furlong. Anthony Van Dyke, Sir Dragon A and Mad Moon racing up towards the line on the near side. Japan with Broom. Anthony Van Dyke has won it. Anthony Van Dyke is another win in the derby for Ballydoyle. A Ballydoyle bonanza. A well, as you could see, an absolutely spectacular finish for the world's greatest flat race. Flat race over Hill and Dale. It was, in fact, Anthony van Dijk, trained by Aidan O'Brien and ridden by loyal soldier Shami Heffernan, who was just too good in the closing stages, having had a rather troubled passage to the finish line. Just too good for Mad Moon, who's trained by 86-year-old Kevin Pendergast. The third place went to Japan, beautifully ridden by Wayne Lorden. You'll hear a lot more about this son of Galileo. And the fourth place went to Broom, who was ridden by Donica O'Brien, with the eventual favourite Sir Dragonaut finishing in fifth place. But very, very small margins between the first and the fifth placed horses. And we're going to play out the show with a couple of interviews that we concluded during the course of the afternoon, starting off with John Costa. If you took every single race go around the world and asked them if there was one race they'd be able to attend, it would for sure be the derby at Epsom. 240 years, the way the course, you know, it wasn't designed. They just happened to uh, nail a piece of wood down here and what it does, what the horses have to be. And I've always been told that the best horse always wins this race because you have to have everything. You have to have speed, you have to have stamina, you have to have courage, you have to have balance, you have to have a great mind to win this race. And we've often seen horses come into this race as favorite or second favorites without the mind. And, and they've been found out here. So, you know, to, just to witness this, is, is it's just phenomenal. And I don't think a lot of the people up there really realize what Bernard has afforded us. And to put the lid on the afternoon, the man who made it all possible, the man 
who provided us with the feeds, with the producer that we had there, Dieter Volberg, who made sure that all the feeds coming in from all the OB vans around Epsom Downs were taken live to South Africa to give you the clearest possible picture of the world's greatest flat race. So It's not investing on their own. I think as soon as I found sponsors who are prepared to put some effort into it, which we did, a, a lot of effort, and Raymond, and I wish him well, and Raymond's really struggling at the moment. Raymond really kicked the ball off for us, and he did a magnificent job, and we now just follow through. And I hope once I'm in uh, splendid isolation and retired, that they will continue on this magnificent uh, journey. Uh, this is beamed to 30 countries live today. Think about it, 30 countries live, one name mentioned only, invested. There's not another advertiser to be seen. Uh, if that's not value, well then I don't know what value is.